The NBA season is over. We're looking ahead to the NBA draft just eight days away. Wow, is it coming fast? So it's time to make perhaps our final player evaluations of the season. For our coach, Jamal Mosley, and our president of basketball operations, Jeff Weltman, the challenge is ahead for the two leaders of this franchise on today's Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando magic podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is June 14th, 2023. My name is Philip Ross. Reich. I'm the expert in site editor over at orlandomagicgala.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, we're going to talk about the job Jamal Mosley did this year. We've talked a little bit about it in the past. We're going to give him a more full evaluation today. The foundation that he built and now how he has to level up as a coach. Plus, the challenges ahead for Jeff Weltman as the Magic enter this new phase of their rebuild. We'll get to all that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. On one hand, Jamal Mosley's job is fairly easy. Young players are going to get better. They're going to gain experience. And his job is, on one hand, simply to foster growth, to allow those players to improve, to allow those players to get better, to allow those players to get a feel for everything. In some respects... He is still a coach who is coaching without expectation, without the expectation of result. I I said this a million times during the course of the season, probably to your annoyance. So I will say it one more time because this is probably the last season we will be able to say this. This season was not about this season. Winning was important. It was a byproduct of the growth that the Magic were trying to create. But it was not the goal. This season was not being judged on how many wins or losses the Magic had. Now, having said that, going from 22 to 34 wins is certainly a sign that things went well. Wins are definitely evidence of something. But if the Magic had won 30 games... 28 games. Yeah, we might have thought a little bit differently about things, but that wasn't how we were going to judge Jamal Mosley. This was a pressure, a relatively pressure-free season. On the other hand, there is no such thing as a pressure-free season. There are always expectations. There is always a bigger goal out there. And Jamal Mosley doesn't want to be what Jacques Vaughn was for this Magic team. A, a babysitter who couldn't get the team over the hump. And, and you know, that's... that's uh, Jacques Vaughn has turned into a fantastic coach. And, and I thought, even when he was here, that he probably wasn't the guy to take them forward. And that became more clear as, as the Magic struggled to coalesce and, and find their path forward. And then, yeah, some of that was Rob Hennigan and drafting and... Jacques Vaughn has proven himself to be a good coach, but I I think that's a fair characterization, a fair way to talk about his tenure in Orlando. It just, it never came together, uh, for for lack of a better way to phrase it. Um, So, Jamal Mosley wants to build a foundation a foundation for this team to keep growing, for this team to develop. He wants to be that coach. And again, um, as I said a million times this year, Jamal Mosley often wasn't the coaching the team that he had, coaching the team that he's going to have two, three years from now. 
where a lot of these core players will be the same. A lot of the things that they're seeing are going to be the same. He is coaching a team off in the future while still building and developing a team in the present. It's not an easy thing to do. And like I said, it's very easy to fail at. And that's kind of the miracle that Jamal Mosley pulled this season. I'm not sitting here to say that Jamal Mosley should have won coach of the year. Um, you know, there Mike Brown was the coach of the year. But the job Jamal Mosley did, keeping a team that started five and twenty together, a young team that started five and twenty, keeping them together, keeping them focused on a bigger goal, keeping them believing in each other and what they are doing, to stay with it, to still have the latitude to experiment, to be willing to try new things, to still hold true to core principles to have everybody bought in through an entire season that started the way it started and ended the way it ended, 29 and 28 over the last 57 games, and that's really 29 and 25 because we'll throw out those last three games. Um, the number six rated defensive ra- defensive team and defensive rating after December 7th, after that 5 and 20 start, which you know we, we throw all those stats out because um, there were no point guards. The Magic wanted to use this year to see what they had in Paolo Bancaro, obviously, but to build a foundation for who they're going to be. Because if they have their star, that means they're ready to move forward. That means they're ready to take that next step. And whether they would be able to is all on the coach. Jamal Mosley did such, I I cannot speak to how good of a job he did keeping this team together. I have seen over the last decade, so many Magic teams get off to bad starts like the Magic did this year and just, I don't want to say quit, but let go of the rope. Start to do things their own way. Not really stick to to a game plan or, or believe necessarily in a grander vision. And look, those Magic teams of the last decade didn't have a guy like Paolo Bancaro. As good as Nikola Vucevic was, as good as Aaron Gordon is, as good as Evan Fournier was, as good as Tobias Harris was, that team did not have a vision. This team has a vision. And Jamal Mosley is a big reason why. This team has a foundation. If we are optimistic, if we are believers in what this team is, is going to become, and what they're going to develop into, it's because Jamal Mosley has that vision. Has an idea of what this team is going to be, what this team is going to become, and who this team is. This is a Magic team that has a bright future. We all can see it. And it has a bright future as much because of its players as it does the foundation of what they're building. The offense, that is very malleable. You know, positionless basketball is a real thing in Orlando. You know, we're talking about the the draft trying to trade up for Almond Thompson or Scoot Henderson, potentially drafting Anthony Black, ideas to take Derek Whitehead. It's because this team wants to be at Bilal Koulibaly. Like, this team does not care about position nomenclature. They believe that it's who you defend, not your size. And they want to be big. And Jamal Mosley, honestly expertly used that size throughout the course of the season. Whether it was giving Bull Bull his chance, whether it was Franz Wagner running the point, whether it was Paolo Bancaro expanding his passing game, expanding his pick and roll game from what he did in college. Jamal Mosley had such a successful season. And yes, we can debate some of his rotation choices. We can debate some of his lineup choices. We can debate some of his late game ideas and and, and ways to set the team up for the end of games. But like I said before, this season wasn't about winning necessarily. And that, though, is the next phase. Because as much as the Magic need to level up as a team, Jamal Mosley needs to level up as a coach. We'll talk about the ways that he will have to do that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at Prize Picks. Yes, the NBA playoffs promotion is now over for Prize Picks. So hopefully you got your shot at the million dollar prize. 
But Prize Picks is still your best, best place to go for daily fantasy sports. You go to those other daily fantasy sports sites. I've played them. You've played them. We've all played them. You know, we all scream ice cream, as it were. Uh, and they're confusing. What are the points? What is the point system? The salary cap is confusing. And then you enter these pools and you notice it's the same guys winning every single week. You're lucky to make your own money back. That's a good day. On prize picks, it's completely different. It's just you versus the numbers. What you do is you go in, you select a player, and you pick his projection. If you think that Aaliyah Boston, for instance, of the Indiana Fever, is going to score 25 points, you say she'll score more than 25 points. It's really that easy. All you have to do is pick two to six players, and if they go on to score more or less than their prize picks projections, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. Again, no competing against other people. It's just you versus projections. And prize picks offers projections on any sport that you watch, including MLB, PGA, uh, WNBA, eSports, NASCAR, and a whole lot more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's really that easy. They offer safe and fast withdrawals. They're currently operational in more than 30 states, including Florida, as well as Canada. Download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code LOCKED UP. If you deposit $100, PrizePix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, PrizePix will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code LOCKED UP and sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. So I want to use Jamal Mosley's own phrasing to kind of evaluate him and evaluate what comes next for him. You know, I like coach speak. Um, I like interpreting it. I like you. I, I like, you know, I will let my subjects define the terms of the season. You know, like I, you know, I have my own expectations. Like I've said it here before. I think next year, the magic should be, should make the postseason. I think we're, we're at that point, but I, I am, I also like to, to like kind of talk to coaches and, and talk to talk about the team on their own terms, because ultimately it's it's them that that set the expectations and set set what they want to accomplish. And you know, Jamal Mosley and we rallied around this idea uh, after the 2022 season. Jamal Mosley sat at the dais after the Magic defeated the Miami Heat in what became the Magic's exit interviews, and said, "You know, we had a good season this year. We obviously went through some struggle, but next year we have to level up." And that was our rallying cry. That was the mission all year. And Look, going from 22 to 34 wins, winning the games, the Magic won. We all, I think we all agree that the Magic leveled up. Now, you know, I talk to people who are like, oh, the Magic should have still made the playoffs or, you know, there's no time to waste or all that. And, and I'm not here to dismiss those ideas. You know, the Magic have to start picking up the pace a little bit and, and, and are going to have to meet some expectations. Because the mission again after last season, after last season's success is to level up again. And we're going to spend a lot of time in the down part of the offseason asking what leveling up again means. You know, and we'll see what free agent moves are made, what offseason moves are made, what draft picks are made. Uh, we'll see what that all looks like. But the mission, once again, is to level up, to take another step forward, to take another, uh, another path forward here. And I think that's going to be, that's going to be the fun part of the season again. But just as much as the Magic as individual players have to level up, Jamal Mosley is going to have to level up his game as well. And look, I, I'm a believer in Jamal Mosley. Um, I, I think that, you know, the decisions he made, the things that he's trying to do, I think that those are good decisions in the long run. Um you know, the biggest criticism I see of Jamal Mosley, and, and I'll, I'll agree to this criticism a little bit, is his rotations often leave the, leave the magic with lineups that don't make sense, um, that ultimately kind of crush them, that cost them wins. Now, I would argue that some of that is some long-term thinking. Paolo Bancaro and Franz Wagner, I believe, played about 60 to 70 per, 65 to 70 percent of their minutes together. I think that was very intentional. Spend this season getting those those two guys used to playing with each other. Get them as many minutes as possible and see where that takes you and see where that goes from there. 
I think that was intentional. Putting the ball in Paolo Bancaro's hands at the end of the game. Putting the ball in Paolo and Franz's hands at the end of the game. Uh, I believe Franz Wagner took the most shots in clutch situations of any player on the Magic. Paolo Bancaro was second. Neither of them were good at it. Both of them really struggled late in games. If the Magic were trying to win games, Markel, uh, not that the Magic were trying to win games, but if the Magic were looking at the numbers and saying, what do we need to do to win more of these close games, which are going to determine whether we go to the playoffs or not, they should have been putting the ball in Markel Fultz's hands. Markel shot like 53% in clutch situations. He was really, really good. And he's a better passer. Franz and Paolo aren't passers in clutch situations yet. There are all these like little decisions that were made. And fans were critical of them in the moment. And I'm sure I sat here and said, like, look, guys, these are lineups that are being built for the long term. They want Paolo Bancaro to have the clutch minutes and fail at them now so that when they're trying to make the playoffs next year, the year after, the year after, he's comfortable in those situations. The Magic were willing to accept failure today to build success for the future. And that was an overarching philosophy. But Mosley is not unaware, I think, of, of some of these questions and some of these struggles. Jamal Mosley was showing playoff clips to the team all throughout the season. He is preparing his team for the playoffs. And, and obviously, you could tell anyone about the playoffs. Actually playing in the playoffs is a completely different story. And that's going to be the most fascinating thing to watch, to see this team play with a little bit of playoff pressure. Um, you know, they struggled to build win streaks this year. Uh, after their big win streak in December. And, you know, again, they didn't lose a lot of games. They were really level. It was really, like, fascinating to watch them become a 500 team. And, look, that's leveling up. 500, being a 500 team is going to get you to the playoffs most years. Uh, but they're going to have to learn how to build win streaks and, and, and keep momentum going. As much as they've learned how to stop losing streaks, which is a huge skill. Learning how to stop losing streaks is a huge skill. But mostly is going to be a big part of this equation. It's going to come down to the roster decisions that he makes, the rotation decisions that he makes. It's going to come down to how he decides to employ his roster. It's going to come down to saying, you know, we've got this rebuilding project, but we got to win this game. I got to pull the plug early on oh, some bull bull minutes if he's still on the team. Or, you know, this player's really struggling or this lineup's really struggling. I got to abandon this experiment early. What's going to change for the Magic this season? I think they will still have a long-term view of things. I don't think a lot of these things are going to go away. And yes, I think even early in the season, there will be a longer leash on things. If the Magic makes some odd decisions early in the season, it's because that's when you experiment so that you know what's going to work and you can really commit to it later in the season. But... The leash has got to be shorter on some of these lineups. And, and look, some of that's on Jeff Weltman making sure the Magic have workable lineups, that the Magic have better depth. I think, again, I, I've said this a million times, depth is such a huge thing. You know, you, you there are players on this Magic roster that are still young and developing and, you know, are have potential, but aren't reliable. Um, and, and that's... That's where the Magic need to improve the most is, is getting reliable players. This is this is going to be interesting to watch um, because I think Mosley's shown a lot of flexibility. Like he has his principles and, and the Magic are pretty good at them, especially defensively. But he's going to have to have a lot more flexibility. And as the pressure mounts, He's going to have to show that he can make the right decisions. Everyone's been playing with house money for the last two years. Let's be real. Winning has been a secondary goal. But that's getting ready to change. And we're going to find out just how good of a coach Jamal Mosley is over the course of the next year or two. He's got to get the next two years. Unless next year is a complete disaster, this team believes in him. He has earned every opportunity to take this team to their next level. He's earned every opportunity to get a playoff series and see how good he is as a coach. He ain't going anywhere. I've seen some people who are like, you know, it's it's time. Let's get a new coach. No, no, no. Stability is good. Stability is very, very good. This team believes in him. 
he believes in this team. They're all on the same page. That's going to help them level up as much as anything else. But Mosley's going to have to be a more precise coach. I think he's a great coach. But as winning becomes more important, precision and your decision-making and, 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 and what you're trying to do becomes that much more important too. We're going to close today's show talking about the leaders of the Orlando Magic, the test ahead for Jeff Weltman after some pretty careful management so far. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. The story on Jeff Weltman uh, throughout his tenure with the Orlando Magic has been one of patience. Sometimes annoyingly so, sometimes for the most part, rightly so, but Jeff Weltman has been very deliberate with the people he brings in, with the, the teams he creates, and the players that he values. Very clearly, continuity is an important aspect of this team and, and of who the Magic want to be. He isn't going to go out there and just make trades to make trades. Very clearly, he believes a team success is built over multiple years. Like we talked about yesterday with the Denver Nuggets. A team success is built over trials and tribulations and, and, and failures and successes together. And so every offseason, we almost come into this to the season expecting the, de the default for us is that he's going to keep everybody. And that was what he did last offseason. Resigned Gary Harris, resigned Mo Bamba, resigned Mo Wagner. There wasn't a lot of new blood in the roster outside of Paolo Bancaro and Caleb Houston. Now, obviously, that's going to change. We're expecting him to make one either moderate or major free agent move. There are two draft picks coming in. There are new players coming in. And there are financial and contract decisions that this team is getting ready to make. Jeff Weltman has carefully managed and carefully created flexibility in this team to do anything. But the question now becomes, what is anything? When are we going to use this flexibility? When are we going to put some skin in the game? When are we going to put some chips in? Now, we're not expecting it this offseason, believe it or not. We're not expecting the team to go after Fred Van Vliet. The biggest free agent this team's probably going to chase is Gary Trent Jr. And, you know, maybe the Magic put in a three-year, $62, $63 million deal or something like that. Maybe the Magic don't. Maybe the Magic go a little bit more moderate. There are some more moderate free agent options out there. Maybe the Magic do try and trade up in this draft, and that's their big move. Trying to combine 6-11 and 11 to get to 2 or 3 or 4 to get Scoot Henderson or Amen Thompson. I think those are I, I, the framework for those deals I'm not super enthused about, but it's possible. And the leaking that Scoot Henderson had a really good workout from Charlotte, uh, if you saw that on, on ESPN, um, you know, I, I would bet that's from Scoot's people because Scoot has been taking a lot of hits lately for no reason. Um, but yeah, it's there are there is opportunity for Jeff Weltman to do a lot of things. And like I said, the test this offseason, like with Jamal Mosley, is to level up. It's to level up this team. We know internal growth is going to help a lot. These guys work hard. They have a coach who knows how to put them in the right spots, that knows how to get the most out of them developmentally. But now it's about building a winning team. The Magic can't rely. I hinted at this. I'll say his name. Chima Okeke has had a rough career so far. If the Magic are relying on him for major minutes next, next season, that's a problem. Bull Bull was a great development story, showed some real, real flashes, essentially had a rookie season. I do think you probably need to give him a second season, but the kind of mistakes that he was consistently making, the, the liability that he was on defense, that's going to be a problem in the playoffs. If Bull Bull is in a playoff in, in a playoff rotation next year, barring tremendous growth, and, and maybe that's still maybe that's possible, that's a problem. This is a young Magic team that needs some growth and needs some guidance. 
So Jeff Weltman's test this offseason, this is not an offseason where he can sit on his hands. He's got money to spend. And again, spend it wisely. Don't just, you know, don't just throw it out there like Rob Hennigan did that one summer. Um, it's not about spending money to spend money. Everything needs purpose. I agree completely with that. But the Magic need to get put themselves in a position to be the playoff team. At the end of the day, yes, player growth is the most important. The Magic's success is going to depend on Paolo Bancaro taking a, a big leap into starting. It's going to depend on Franz Wagner and Wendell Carter and Marco Fultz and Jalen Suggs. It's going to depend, you know, to some extent on Jonathan Isaac's health. Cover yourself for that. That's, that's a big, big thing. Um, it's going to depend on so many of these things. But the Magic have to shore themselves up to. As much as those players need to level up, Jeff Weltman needs to level up the roster around those players. And that's not necessarily making a humongous move. I'm not saying go out and get Trey Young or Chris Paul or spend a ton of money. It's smart moves. Like, you know, Denver adding Bruce Brown or, uh, you know, adding that shooter that this team desperately needs or that veteran. Find your horse Grant. Like, that's what I'm waiting for. Find me a horse Grant. Find me a vet, an old head, who is ready to invest in this young team. Gary Harris has done this, um, but yeah, I think we, I think I'd like another one. Um, find me an old head who has been to the top of the mountain, has been to the playoffs, and can be a voice that this that everyone in that locker room is going to listen to. As much as Jamal Mosley can teach, they need a player in that locker room and making an impact on the court that's going to help them get there too. That is a big challenge for Jeff Weltman because he has done a great job being careful and cautious and building this foundation that we're all really, really excited about. But he also now has to make moves. Standing still is, it's an option. It could work, but it's not the best option anymore. And while, you know, you could certainly argue that his hesitancy to make trades, to move around uh, in the offseason, to stick with his guys, it's both admirable and important, but it's also hurt this team. 2019 was an opportunity to try and take another step forward, and, and the Magic didn't take it. When 2020 was what 2020 was, standing still was the death knell. And that was him trying to maybe have his cake and eat it too. But now, this team has to make improvements, and so much of that is on their leaders to help this young roster do it. It's a big test ahead for Jeff Weltman to finally push this team ahead and forward. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Lockdown Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Hit your tune in Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the fun places to know the podcast to your podcast-enabled listening device. For latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at omagicdaily. I'll have my evaluation on Jeff Weltman up on the site later today. Plus, I'll do my draft review on Derek Lively. Derek Lively posted on Instagram that he was in Orlando yesterday. Um, I wonder why he would be in Orlando. Um, so we'll we'll chat a little bit about him on on online on the site. We'll chat a little bit about him on the show um, a little bit later on uh, this week, or certainly before the draft. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode. If you're part of my everyday crew, I have two things for you. First, on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Magic, we're going to talk a little bit more about the challenge ahead of Jeff Weltman, an off-season discussion with our friend Keith Smith. That'll be coming up on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Magic. Also, be sure to check out my subtext. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked on Magic for the latest updates on the Orlando Magic, conversation starters, and a direct line to me to ask me any question. Uh, as we build our subscriber base, I'm hoping to do subtext exclusive mailbacks. So the only way you'd be able to ask a mailback question would be through the subtext. Um, and of course, I will answer any question you have on that subtext. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to move some stuff over there. So definitely check out subtext. That's joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Magic. But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic to Alien Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.